Let's take another snapshot. Let's select it. Let's select the orientation one. So here's a before. Here's an after. All right, so here's a picture I've taken uh, during our trip to Barcelona, and it's actually a very dull picture, and you might wonder why I'm using this in a tutorial. The reason for that is because I'm actually shooting this on the go, so I haven't rehearsed this or anything. There's no duplicate over here. Uh, yeah, yeah, you still can see it, I can see. Uh, there's no duplicate over here, so I didn't do anything to these images yet. And the reason for me to use this image is because I can imagine that a lot of you who are watching my video who are new to editing photos or anything within that spectrum are always wondering how to approach a photo or how to make something look a little bit more interesting than what it appears on screen, right? So I'm just going to try and dumb it down for you. So yeah, let's start with this image. And there's always a couple of basic things I want to address first. So that's the contrast, that's the exposure. So in this case, we are going to add some exposure by dragging this to the right to have the image properly exposed. Now, please keep in mind that the right side is the highlights, the midtones is the middle, and then the darkest part or the shadows is the left side. So let's drag it to the left. There we go. And that already makes it much more lively. But we're not there just yet. Now, if you want to see if something is overexposed, they've got a couple of indicators over here in dark table. We've got the clipping indicator. And then the red parts are actually overexposed. And then the blue parts are underexposed. So if you see anything over or underexposed, you can address it if you desire to do so. Some people like to have their images more bright. So let's say real estate photos, for instance, they're usually very bright. Usually they are shot in HDR. So that gives them that specific look you have with real estate photos. Other people like to expose to the left because you can always get more details out of the shadows than you can out of the highlights, uh, provided that you have a good camera with a wide dynamic range, that is. Right, so we've addressed the exposure. So let's open up the Filmic module because that's the preferred module in this scene referred workflow. And I'm going to add in some contrast. So I'm going to the look and I'm just going to move this to the right. It's basically very simple and it's a very strong module as well. So make sure you don't overdo it. And just like when you watch my videos and you see me do everything in one step, Usually it takes me a couple of times or like tweaking around like, oh, that's a little bit too much. Oh, that's that's not enough. I got to change that. I got to add some more. So I'm just like you, but on video, it looks like I'm a professional. I'm not, uh, but that's because I can cut out anything that isn't working properly. And I can save you guys a lot of time by doing so. Right. So we've got the exposure checked. We've got the contrast checked for now. So now I want to add in some saturation. And the best module for me to work on the colors is the Color Balance RGB module. And it's got a couple of options in the master tab. I'm not going to address the four ways or the masks one. But I've already explained in different videos what these three are. So the linear chroma grading, the perceptual saturation grading, and the perceptual brilliance grading. Basically, I can show you by sliding this to the right, sliding it to the left, and then the same for the saturation, slide it to the right. We got a lot of saturation, slide it to the left. We've got a black and white image, which would work here, but then I would add in some more contrast and I would actually prefer to use a different module. And then we've got the brilliance grading, so that basically brightens up the image as well. That's basically the most easiest way to explain this. So now I want to add in some saturation throughout the entire image. So that requires me to move this slider. And then I want to brighten him, but I want to darken the background. Now that maybe doesn't make sense because I already moved the exposure around. But I think that you should always have like a starting point. And then from that starting point on moving forward, you can tweak some things you've done before. It's not like you do something right now and it has to stay that way forever. You can, you know, imagine something on the go or you can come up with something on the go and then change accordingly. So in that case, I'm going to create another instance of this module, a new instance, and I'm going to create a mask. So I'm going to move here, this one. I'm uh, Draw a mask is all I need. And I just noticed, I'm sorry, I don't have my mouse highlighter on. So let me change it real quick. There we go, much better. Now you can follow along. So I'm going to use uh, this one, the path tool, and I'm going to draw a path 
on him, not around him, but on him. And the reason for that is because we are going to blur and feather it anyways. And if you draw around him, you will create a much bigger halo effect than you would when drawing it in him. Now, let me do this real quick. I'm not going to bore you to death with this and then come back to you when it's finished. So now I've got the mask and we see the feathering here. So I'm going to change that here as well. Feathering radius, blur radius. Now if you want to change the entire mask, you can hold the shift and then drag in the mouse wheel button towards you to make it smaller or away from you to make it bigger. I'm going to draw it towards me. Now I'm going to click this so that shows me the mask. We can change the opacity if we want to. So we can make it more strong. We can make it more soft. I need it to be stronger by a bit. And you can change the contrast of the mask as well. So this is like blurry and then this is harsh, right? I'm going to leave it in the middle. I'm not going to change it right now. Okay, I'm going to click this and then I'm going to drop down the perceptual brilliance grading. And that really darkens our persona. But I don't want to dark our persona. I want to darken everything around him. So I'm going to move over here and then toggle the polarity of the drawn mask. And then this happens, you know, a uh, mistake, I guess, but it's easily fixable. You can just move this to a less stronger value. Now let's see, let's deselect the mask. And this kind of looks artistic for some reason. It's like he's got cut out and then he's been placed on a background of some sort. What else can we do with this? I, I think this looks pretty funky. It's, not, it's something I've never done before. So... Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to change this, but I want to brighten his face because I'm going to use another instance for some reason. Oh, for some reason, I still think it's, it's too dark. And that has to do with the hat that he's on and the way that I shot this, obviously. So I'm going to get another mask and I'm going to use the ellipse tool for that. I'm going to click on his face, drag this in to make it fit his face. And then let's open it up. Now, what's the difference, right? So here's a before and here's an after. His face is much better visible. Now, what else can we do? We can add a vignetting, for instance. So I'm going to add in a vignetting. I'm going to bring the smaller ring in. And I'm going to toggle around with the settings. There we go. Now, let's look at it before and after. So we're going to take a snapshot. And we're going to the filmic RGB. Because that's what... Uh, wait. Wait. We're going back to the orientation one because that's what we started with. And then this is the image we started with. And this is where we are right now. I like it. It's funky. We're not there just yet. Okay. So I want to add in some more contrast. But in this case, I'm going to add in the local contrast module. I'm going to activate it. Deselect the snapshot. And this is the difference. And rather than having a mask around him or something, I'm just going to have this being added to the entire image. Now... What you could do is, let's say you think this value is too strong. You can bring it down to 125, for instance. But what you can do as well, is if we put it to 150 and we think it's too strong, we can check this one, the uniformly click it, and then we can change the opacity. And that will also change how opaque, I hate that word for some reason, how opaque this mask is. This looks good. Let's take another snapshot. Let's select it. Let's select the orientation one. So here's a before, here's an after. I think that's amazing. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought about this. Like I said, I filmed this on the go. This is actually, it's a Sunday today. Yeah, it's a Sunday today. It's currently 11 a.m. So I'm going to rush in, edit this video, and make sure it's on time for this afternoon so that we've got a video because I didn't have any videos for today. Uh, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. Now, one thing before you click off, right? I've had a poll on my website, or I have had a lot of polls on my website. Probably a lot of you will probably click off, but if you're a diehard Rico fan, thank you for being here and hearing me out. So I had a couple of polls on my channel. Once a week, a poll comes up. And what turns out is that the amount between the amount of subscribers between DaVinci Resolve and Darktable are kind of like 50-50. It's not maybe the amount of subscribers, but... The people that saw it, that have been subscribed to my channel, said that the reason they subscribed was Darktable, and the other half said it was a DaVinci Resolve. However, what I notice is I see a big drop-off in my click-through rate. So that means that 
someone commented that on my, I, I'm going to try and edit it here in the screen, but someone said like, look, it has to do with the fact that you cater to Da Vinci and Dark Table, but it gets spread out to everyone. You know, your video gets pushed out to all your subscribers. And then if only half of them click it because they were only interested in Dark Table and not in Da Vinci or vice versa, you get bad grades or yeah, you get bad numbers, right? So that made me wonder that I would probably, or that made me think, because we were on a holiday, and I, I talked it over with uh, my girlfriend, and I was like, maybe I should do it. Maybe I should go and create another channel where I only upload DaVinci Resolve videos. So this channel will remain Darktable, and then the other channel will become DaVinci Resolve. I'm not quite sure about it just yet, because I have a lot of very, very popular videos on DaVinci Resolve on my channel. The only question is, how big is the exchange rate from viewers to subscribers? But let me know in the comment section down below what your preferred choice would be. That would actually mean I would only post once a week on this channel. So on the Sunday, I would upload the Darktable videos. But let me know. I thought about migrating my library, my entire library from uh, this channel to a new channel, like the for the DaVinci Resolve videos, and then put everything on private here so you can't watch them anymore. Uh, but then again, there are a lot of people that do appreciate my DaVinci Resolve videos, and I actually like creating DaVinci Resolve videos as well. So I want to keep that alive. And I've got my crypto channel as well. So let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next week. Do it.